I don't think I need to hide the result of this game. This was the last round encounter from the London Chess Classic between uh, Aronian and Carlsen. Carlsen ended up winning this game, and I thought, well, I was commentating at the time, um, live in the tournament, and it looked to me like Carlsen got lucky. But matters are not so clear. I had another look at this game, and, well, I think the world champion showed real grit to come back and win this game. Let's take a look at it in, in some detail. So Aronian with the white pieces. Interesting little sidestep on move one from Carlsen. He's inviting Aronian to play into a French defence. Um, but of course, Aronian, not really an E4 player. And typically he goes for knight f3 and something, well, just more pragmatic. C5 takes advantage of the fact that white hasn't played C4, so therefore Magnus doesn't need to worry about going to Bononi. Now, lots of moves possible here. E4 transposes into a Sicilian. C4 is a kind of English. Maybe we get a hedgehog out of that. You could play E3. Could lead to a collar or a Tsukatort. But Aronian loves his Fianchetto. And the position looks like a kind of reverse Grunfeld, actually. But Queen B6, the Magnus, you know, is still trying to complicate to keep things tricky. The idea of this is that after bishop c5, of course, the, the knight can't move. So, uh, I mean, white could defend the knight with c3. That's possible. It's, that's very, very tricky, actually. e5 then b4. Um, e3 blocks the diagonal, looks sensible. Problem is, it's not always great to have e3 and g3 when you fianchetto the bishop. So Carlson claims the centre with d5. And if he gets in knight f6, knight c6, gets castled, yeah, it's like a reverse Grunfeld and seems quite satisfactory for black. But queen g4 is an upsetting move. I love the, the cut and thrust of these early moves, actually. Idea is that exploiting the early development of the king's bishop and hoping that black will weaken himself with to g6, maybe the queen will shuffle to f4 or h4. But but Magnus brought the bishop back. Very principled, doesn't want to weaken his king's side. And after castles, he plays knight f6 to attack the queen, so the queen has to fall back. At the moment, white is ahead in development, and I think if black plays quite casually, um, you know, something like knight c6. Well, you can do, but, you know, white will challenge straight away. It's as though white has started the middle game and black still has to get developed. It's very dangerous. So Carlson plays e5, so he's still fighting for control in the center. If the knight comes back, then knight c6, and this bishop can come out easily to you know, one of these squares. And black should be fine there. So again, Aronian has to react to that, otherwise you know, black has basically equalized. And he plays queen b5 check. Now, if queens are exchanged, That threat is very annoying. Black has to play knight a6, but it's an ugly square for the knight. And after c4, it's a kind of sort of Catalanish position where this bishop has fantastic influence over the board. And in white is going to be ahead in development. So after queen b5 check, Magnus had to compromise. He played bishop d7, and that allows white to trade queens and damage pawn structure. On the plus side from black, for black, he at least has established a nice pawn centre. But I think, to my eyes, white is slightly better here, just because of his superior pawn structure. Now, we want to play knight c3, but we don't want to allow knight b4. That's awkward. So first of all, that's why he played bishop d2. Good move. Stop knight b4. And only then knight c3. Tagging form. And the knight dropped, and a4. 
good move from Aronian, so that means that now he uh, can place, play the knight to b5, and Magnus doesn't really want to consign his bishop all the way back here. It doesn't look like a good square. Um, white must be better there, and it kind of locks in the rook as well. So Magnus, again, he compromised. He just exchanged off bishop for knight and played rook c8, attacking the pawn and bishop c3. But you can see the position has settled somewhat, and there's no doubt that this is better for white. This bishop has no opponent and has potential looking down at these pawns. This bishop also very nice. Um, it's not clear what black should play in this position. You, know, you can't use that centre. Carlson played h5. That's a very unusual move. I guess it solves the background problem for the king. Maybe he's looking to get some squares for his knight later on, but certainly doesn't trouble white in any way. And Aronian was able to build up nice and steadily. Now, as usual, if one of your minor pieces isn't very well situated, you need to reroute it. So this knight comes from b3, where it's not doing much, over to f3. Good move. So it simply has more prospects from this square. Magnus exchanged on g3, and he's got to deal with the attack to the e pawn. He could play knight g6 to, to keep that pawn front, to keep those pawns protecting all those squares. Um, but as I said before, it's not clear what black's next move is going to be in this position. It's a very pleasant position for white to play. You know, there are lots of ways to just build up slowly. Um, so instead, Magnus committed. That pawn's under attack, and he pushed forward. To be honest, I, would, I still would have expected knight g6. White is slightly better, but, you know, it hangs tough for a moment. After e4, of course, it opens up this diagonal. Knight d4 is possible here, but Levon played knight g5. It's a more interesting move because it keeps this diagonal open. Knight g6, of course, on a good day, Magnus would love to be able to exchange those bishops, bring the knight in here, but white has some initiative. Rook a7, hitting the pawn. Rook defends the pawn. Bishop d4. It's possible to take this. This must have been very tempting for Aronian to play. Drop the knight back, and you can see that, I mean, black's pawn structure is a bit of a mess. White is going to lock things down with c3. Yeah, maybe this bishop could bounce around to b3. It's one possibility. At some moment, the knight may come to f4. It might be possible to bring the rook all the way back and double on the d-file. White has possibilities here. But Aronin had seen something else. He played bishop d4, hitting this pawn. And after bishop c5, he traded and played c4. This provokes an immediate crisis for black because the pawn on e4 is getting undermined. If, well, let's say pawn takes pawn, we trade, trade. Now we could play our uh, knight takes pawn, not so good. Probably we just take on b7 actually, but this one is potentially dropping after the check. Well, we don't come up the board because of knight g4, but we play knight bishop f1 and king g2, and I think the king is safe. Um, in the meantime, yes, that b pawn can run. Uh, there are potentially threats of mate on the back rank. This knight is tremendous. And yes, king g2 and bishop c4 looks good for white. So after c4, during the game, I thought Magnus was completely lost here. Just looked hopeless. You know, every single one of white's pieces seems as though it's either in play or about to come into play. And black's pawn structure is creaking. But it's at this moment where Magnus showed real metal. He played knight e7. Aronian took on d5. Now, if this pawn is taken, then e4 drops 
and this is too much. White's bishop is tremendous. But this is brilliant. Knight c8, hitting the rook. This was Carlson's intention. Now, if the rook goes back to a1, then knight d6, what a fantastic blockader. Now, white may be a pawn up, but actually, how do you make any progress here? That pawn has been secured, so that keeps the bishop and knight out of play. The pawn is blockaded, nothing happening on the d-file. This knight looms over the barricades and looks at the b-pawn. Very hard for white to make any progress there at all. What an incredible piece. So, the knight's attacking the rook. Aurelian played the rook back to a4. Now, if knight d6, because there's more pressure on the e-pawn, we can just play bishop takes pawn and the rook and knight protect, that's more serious for black. Therefore, after rook a4, Carlson played knight b6, hitting the rook. The rook came back to a3. Carlson still shouldn't take here because the e-pawn drops. Too dangerous. Instead, he played knight c4, and he reached d6 again. The difference here with Aronian's rook moves is that he can now take on c5. So white is now two pawns up. But Carlson has judged that actually he has pretty decent drawing chances here. First of all, he activated his rook. Now white could sit there and hold the pawns, but that's not Aronian style. He went for it. So first of all, bishop h3. So that stops any rook coming to the c file. But rook e8 is a superb move. Threatening rook e5, attacking the knight. Rook c7. Now, if rook e5, not so good. Whoops. Rook e5, not so good, because we play knight takes pawn. And after knight takes knight, bishop e6. And, well, if rook f8, defending. Rook takes pawn. White has, let me count them, four pawns for the piece. That bishop, what an incredible piece. Pin and win. And the b-pawn is very dangerous. That must be good for white. So rook c7 just played. So Carson defended against the threat to take on f7 with king f8. b6 from Aronian still looks fantastic for white. Pawn up, active pieces. The rook e5, putting the question to the knight. And Aronian was forced to jump into e6 with check giving up the piece, but I mean, Aronian must have felt that, th that there's logic to uh, his the way he's played, his continuation. There's real flow. You know, he wasn't going to go backwards here. He gives up a piece. He's now got a strong pass pawn supported by the bishop. The d file is opened. The rook is on an active square. He must have felt that his initiative would carry him through to victory. But this is where Carlson defends brilliantly. Knight e8 to support this knight. Rook d7, hitting the knight here. And now another brilliant defensive move. Carlson does not move the knight. He plays rook a5. And this is, I think, the only move to hold the game. If rook takes knight, white is the, is the exchange down. And now a very important move, rook d5, which practically forces an exchange of rooks. After the exchange of rooks, the rook is going to come here and scoop the pawns. Well, this should still be a draw after this, for example. And that's probably what Aronian should play. But he failed to appreciate that this was a turning point in the game. He didn't want to draw. He wanted to continue his initiative. He played b4. And after rook d5, he switched his second rook into the attack. And it looks incredibly dangerous. Black's pieces somehow look very awkward, and the king as well. But Aronian had it under control. 
they reach the time control and suddenly Aronin realized he was in trouble. Bishop g4 played. So he's trying to, you know, perhaps activate his rook here. Rook d5, excellent move. And that means that the rook was free to take this pawn because of the rook defending the knight here. Rook a1, the rook wants to come all the way over, but this is defended against. This is a very good move. Um, if rook h1, king g8 stops any threats here, and black is fine. So bishop came back. Rook b2 hitting the bishop. Bishop came back, and now rook d2. And basically, Carlson has enough counterplay at this end of the board. Aronian hasn't got enough here. And he's a piece down. The game ended dramatically with Aronian advancing his king, hoping for a miracle. But well, if king g5, then this actually leads to checkmate. But checkmate for Carlson, knight f6 and mate. So after the check, the bishop interposed here, g5, check. Now the king staggered up the board. There's one last trick, but Carlson had it all under control. And rook takes knight. Obviously, knight takes rook, and that leads to a mate. But rook h7, Carlson had seen it all. And here, Aronian resigned. So for example, if rook a8, you can play here check the king back in here and in fact it's going to be white's king that is in desperate trouble here so black is a piece up with an attack it's over so Aronian resigned so yeah my first impression of this game Carlson got a bit lucky well I'm not sure he showed really gritty defense and there was no moment you could pinpoint where you could say oh yeah Aronian had a really clear winning chance um, and, and this defence of Carlson's bringing the knight back to e7 and eventually round to d6, this was brilliant and clearly enough to save the game.